Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and welcome to this week's episode of The Knife Guy. So what are we talking about today? So uh, you guys know that this was a uh, this was a very recent acquisition, uh, the Demco AD 20.5. Uh, this is a Knife Center exclusive in 3V uh, and titanium. You can get the, uh, I don't know if the titanium one sold out right now, but you can get the standard, like just the gri the grivery one or however you say that. They also have D2, etc. Uh, everybody was waiting on that, you know, this configuration of the 8020 to come out with a better steel and they did. Um, and uh, 3V is an interesting steel to me because it's very tough. It's a CPM steel. It's very tough. Not known for having incredible edge retention. It is known for stropping back up very easily and sharpening back up very easily. It's also known for being extremely tough. Uh, not a stainless steel, but many people enjoy it for EDC. Uh, I think primarily this steel excels as a fixed blade steel, but it still works well in the folding knife department, especially if you have a really strong lock. Like if you're going to do some borderline abuse stuff to your knife, right? You definitely want a tough steel. And if it's gonna be a folding knife, it should have a really, really strong lock that pulls a lot or as much of the pressure away from the pivot as possible. Anyway, I still don't think 3V is the optimal steel for the AD 20.5, but I was happy to pick it up because I thought, you know what? I'm gonna use that thing. As much as I used my original AD 20.5, which now belongs to my brother, uh, I decided you know, he could make use of that uh, where he works. Um, but uh, I was like, I'm going to use that. I'm going to carry that. I'm just going to enjoy the uh, titanium and the, the fact that it's 3V. And eventually I'll get a chance to um, really spend some time with 3V and sharpen it up and, and uh, just kind of come to understand it a bit better. Um, I don't have a lot of other, you know, use experience like with uh, 3V sharpening or, or just general use. So it's hard for me to tell just yet. It did about what I expected it to do. I had a, I had a bunch of boxes that we're building up in my garage. Now, you guys have heard me talk about this a lot. This is really the extent of the use that my knives get is when boxes from things that we order or whatever get piled up and I save them intentionally for when I really wanna test a steel uh, and then I break them down into neat little piles and it generally takes between an hour and two hours. Uh, this, uh, this particular venture um, with this knife, it went on for about an hour and a half. And I'm gonna admit, after about 30 minutes, the 3V, and this was pretty thick cardboard. Um, this isn't the perfect geometry for a you know knife, like for like it's not the perfect slicing geometry. It's a good EDC geometry. By the way, I prefer specifically the shark's foot version of this knife. Um, it's not ideal for like slicing, right? There are definitely better knives for breaking down cardboard. Uh, but I use what I enjoy, not what's necessarily perfectly optimal, right? So anyways, 3V is not the best composition for what I was doing and the geometry of the uh, AD 20.5 shark's foot was not optimal. The sharp, really sharp edge seemed to kind of fall away after about 30 minutes. And after about 45 minutes, I could tell it was just no longer sharp. I was just pushing a wedge through cardboard, which is fine. It will continue, that this, this knife continued to function and break these boxes down with minimal hang up, like there was hang up there, here or there. It continued to do it all the way until I was finished. But by the time I was finished, after an hour and a half, it was definitely dull. And so if you guys watch that short, you guys know I, I put a new edge on this and I have it uh, <laughs> very, very, very sharp. This is extremely sharp. Now, if you don't know, I have always used, for years, I have used a KME, and uh, there are lots of sharpening systems out there, but I love my KME. There were lots of people saying like, how do you, oh man, I wish I had those skills. This isn't skill. The, the KME is a guided system. It took me maybe three practice runs to understand what I was doing. Um, I bought the 50 grit beast stone, which is actually kind of hard to find now. And then I own up to, what did I? What's the final one? Is it a thousand or no, it's 1500. So I stop at 1500 and then I strop. Now there's a lot of other steps that some people take, but I found uh, that will yield a, a pretty good edge. Um, so I didn't do any mirror polishing, but the edge that I got, just, this is my best scratch line work. 
<laughs> the edge that I got on it was very satisfactory and very even and you know just a, a little bit outside of what you would expect on uh, the factory edge. This is at least by the KME's uh, system. It's actually still locked there. Uh, at a, I think it's right at 19 degrees is what I was doing per side. The KME does a great job. I uh, I nicked up the, uh, just beware, I nicked up the uh, studs a little bit, sharpened those. Tried to unscrew it, but it's not, uh, it's not captive, so it just kind of spins. So that was a bummer. But anyways, sharpened it up, and um, I thought, you know, from what I understand about 3V, because there were some, it had rolled in areas. The, the 3V had held true to what I had understood or read, right? Uh, it had not chipped anywhere. It had rolled heavily. And it was a basically just a wedge. Like, it was a dull wedge at that point. And I thought, well, I definitely don't need a 50 or a 140. So I started with a uh, 300 grit. And honestly, I probably didn't even need to start there. But I didn't know. I had never had any experience. I was just guessing. Um, I cannot tell you. I mean, I was... I, I was reprofiling, right? I, well, I was changing the, the angle. And from start to finish, this maybe took me 35 minutes, um, which is much, much faster. That's, that's, that's way faster than what I, what it normally takes me. Um, I would say, you know, the fastest sharpening job that I've ever done going from a completely dull edge to a really sharp edge is probably like 45 minutes. And depending on what the steel is now, you know, I, I know there's going to be some people going, 45 minutes, I can do it in time. Okay, fine. My skill level is still at novice, right? I'm not a professional. I'm not an amazing. I'm not trying to claim that I'm really good and that I know a whole lot. I'm just saying, for my own personal journey, right, this was fast for me, right? Getting it the way that I want to get it, you know, with the tools that I have available to me that I'm comfortable with, right? Um, this was fast for me. Uh, there are some, in some cases, I've spent over an hour and a half on an edge and still not got it exactly the way that I wanted, right? Um, and uh, I was really impressed with that. I remember thinking like, I, so I went 300, right? Got it to the, uh, not got it to 19 degrees, got the burr, and then moved up to 600 and then 1500, which was way, you know, that, that took way less time. Um, and uh, 35 minutes and it was screaming sharp off the strop. Um, that, I mean, could you get it sharper with mirror edge? Could I get it to where I'm, you know, splitting hairs and all? Well, okay, maybe, but I, I don't, eh, especially with 3V, I'm not sure that it's really all that. You know, when I think about how quickly it lost its razor edge, right? I think, eh, that's not really that important to me. Um, but I remember thinking my whole perception of the steel is now different because after breaking down the boxes, I was like, eh, 3V is kind of, eh. For what I use it for, right? It's kind of... Now, if I'd used it for something else, I mean, there's there's a, there's an infinite number of circumstances, an infinite number of predicaments I could find myself in that would give that would yield a different experience with the steel, right? That's what people are going to say. Well, if you use it in this... I know. Believe me, I know. And I would think common sense would... Like, for most people, that's common sense, right? That's not something that most of us need to be educated on. Use a knife in different environments on different you know, it, it, cutting different materials, right? And you're going to get a different experience. But the sharpening side of it was a huge part of my overall thoughts towards 3V so far, which again, is it's very minimal because it's just been through cardboard. But the simplest test here, just cutting until it's dull and then sharpening it. Using it to break down cardboard boxes, um, I've definitely, ha I've had way better experience. I've had steels that just like don't seem to lose their edge for like an hour, you know. <laughs> They'll go twice or three times as long or will barely need to be stropped after an hour and a half. Um, and, uh, you know, but then I turn around and it, when they finally do need to be sharpened, those are the steels oftentimes that take so much longer and are so much more frustrating, right? And then some of, sometimes those steels will chip while I'm sharpening them, which is, it sucks. It just makes me freak out, right? Um, so sharpening 3V was such a friendly experience. I, you know, I remember thinking like, this is, this is a huge part of, you know, appreciating a steel is not just using it, but sharpening it, right? 
a lot of people, again, are going to say, and I, I know, like, the, the hardcore users and sharpeners are just not going to be able to help themselves, like, the desperate need to educate. And that's fine. You're welcome to leave your comments down below. But what I think is important is coming to understand a steel for the environments that you are realistically going to use them in, right? Is it fun to learn about how steels will react if you're cutting various types of wood in the rainforest or skinning various types of game, right? Running into bone. Well, yeah, for some people that is really interesting to learn about even if they're not going to do it. For others, it's interesting to learn about because they're going to do it. And for some people, it's completely and totally useless because they're not going to ever do that with their knife, right? So we have to understand <laughs> the most important thing when it comes to actually using your knife is understanding how the steel will react to the environment that you actually plan to use it in, how it will react to the materials that you actually plan to cut with it, right? And then couple that with your experience sharpening it. So that's what I apply this to, right? And my use with a knife, I have to guess, as, as I consider myself the most average and not special person in the world when it comes to using knives. I use knives for the most common types of tasks, mostly packaging and cardboard, right? Every now and then a plastic tie or something like that. Every now and then some rubber, maybe some wood, right? But mostly paper, plastic, and cardboard. The vast majority of people, I have to assume, use their knives just like me. It's just like I've always said. 80, 20, and then 0 .01, right? That's kind of That's kind of how we are. So that's why I, you know, I consider this uh, sort of a, a valid take, or at least a, just an initial take on 3B. Um, and, you know, that's often why we see these types of, when, when we see people testing steel, they will use manila rope or cardboard or something like that to test the edge over time. Because it's just a common material to cut. Anyways, my overall impression of 3B became more positive after I sharpened it, because you know, if the, honestly, if, if it had taken me like over an hour, I would have been like, this is not worth it. The amount of time that the edge, you know, takes to go, because listen, 3V does not have overly impressive edge holding capabilities versus like, you know, a, a lot of like the medium level ingot steels will hold an edge in my experience about the same or even longer than 3V, right? Uh, and some of these super steels, like, I mean, well, how we label them super steels, right? Your M390s, your S90Vs. I mean, these are like multiple times over in my experience versus 3V. But they suck to sharp. I hate, hate, hate sharpening M390. I hate it, right? And, you know, if, if it's really soft, if it's like 59, then great. But truly, like properly rock, rock well hardened M390 that's like 62, it blows. I hate sharpening it. Right? As a novice sharpener who's using a guided system, I hate it. Um, and, you know, that's why I'm, I don't really like M390 that much. But I tend to favor uh, blade steels that are a, a bit easier to sharpen. Because they're going to, you know, the ones that I'm going to use are going to go dull. And I, I you know, sharpening is, is fun and interesting to me, but it's not so therapeutic that I enjoy just sitting there doing it. I kind of want to get it over with, right? So the steels that are easier to sharpen, even if they don't hold an edge that long, I kind of balance those two things out um, and, because I really don't want to sit there sharpening forever. And I, I enjoy the steels that are easier to sharpen a lot more is what I'm trying to say. It's a lo very long-winded way of saying that. I think it's very, very important, um, you know, when you're choosing a, like if you're a collecting, like a lot of people are going to come down and they're like, that's why people who collect knives are so dumb because they don't even know. Let people enjoy what they want to enjoy. Like what compels you to say that? Just let them do what they're going to do. It's not hurting you at all. And it's not your business. <laughs> like it's not, it's, it, the, no part of what you think about what they're doing with their stuff matters right? It's their stuff. So if people want to buy 80 knives made out of M390 and then never use a single one, it literally does not matter what you think about that because it's their stuff. They bought it. So your opinion doesn't matter on it, right? But when it comes to choosing a knife that you're actually going to use, and I mean, take it out with no reservations and just cut, right? And if it gets dirty or it gets wet, right? Or 
it gets uh, scratched up or it gets dropped or what it's, hey, it's your knife, you know? So when it comes down to actually selecting the steel, right? I think it's important to not just kind of pay attention. I mean, like if you're using it as a screwdriver or a pry bar, then, you know, it's kind of out the window, right? Anybody who's like, well, my, my knife is my hammer, my screwdriver, my pry bar, and my knife. I'm like, well, then your impressions of the steel are completely and totally bull crap, right? Because you're, I'll tell you right now, your pocket knife's dull. If you're using it like that, then your knife is dull and you have absolutely no idea what the true edge properties are. <laughs> but if you're using your knife as a knife, right? It's your user, you're just unreserved using it to cut appropriate things. And then if, if the experience calls for a more appropriate tool, then you use a more appropriate tool, right? Well then, yeah, it's important to pay attention to that. But then it's also important to, whether you're somebody who freehand sharpens, use a guided system or use some, whatever you use, it's important to balance those things out and judge the steel like that, right? I think, I, I, I really think, you know, the more that I have spent sharpening, and this is kind of, this kind of goes without saying, right? I'm sure a lot of people are going like, man, is he really going to take 20 minutes to say, it's important to sharpen your knives and then gain some type of experience and understanding from it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My gift is that I can take simple things and stretch them out into long, unnecessary, you know, complicated things, right? Welcome to my channel. What is this? Episode 166? <laughs> it has not going to stop. I'm not going to stop doing this. Um, but yeah, it absolutely is. And I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, like we, we think about just 3V, right? There are so, just for any composition, think about how many possible styles there are of knife to experience that blade steel in right there's a bajillion you could have a fixed blade you could have a long fixed blade short fixed blade you'd have a super thick fixed blade you'd have a thin fixed blade you have however many different blade shapes right <laughs> all these different geometries and shapes and then you have fixed or folding and then comes the finish the finish will also affect that all affects heat treatment. It'll also affect how the blade performs in various environments and et cetera, how much drag there is on the material you're cutting. Then you have to consider the type of material you are cutting, how consistently you're cutting said material. Are you grouping other materials in there, right? What, what is it that you're processing? Just one material, multiple materials, right? How well is it heat treated? Who heat treated it, right? What type of system are you using to sharpen? So it's like just for 3V, like, cause that, you know, people are always calling for you. You don't really understand a steel until you've really, you know, experienced it in a million days. I do not have the time or patience to gather up, you know, hundreds of different styles of knives and different geometries and use them on various materials for this or that, right? And then exp I don't I don't have the time or patience, right? So all I want to do is just use the knife for what I'm going to use it for and then sharpen it the way that I'm comfortable sharpening it and then judge it that way for myself. And then point out, it's important, so you let people know, hey, this is where I used it. This is what I used it on. This is the model, right? So that people know, like, this is very specific. It's not based on a plethora of different variations of this, right? And that, that's, it's valid. It's absolutely valid, right? Now, if you are like, I use 3V and I don't really like it. And I sharpened it up and the edge was okay. That's not enough information, right? That's why when I watch videos about different steels and stuff and I hear that, I'm like, I don't, I have no idea what this person's overall experience with this material is, right? I have no idea. Now, if, if that person had said, you know, I used, 10 different knives in 3V. They were all finished differently with different geometries. And I used some for cardboard, some for wood, right? And I sharpened them all. Uh, and my overall experience was, and I'd be like, well, that's a lot more information. It's much more specific so I can get a general, that, that person seems to have quite a bit of experience with this steel and is judging it in some ways, you know, ha has obviously used it in ways that I will never use it. So that all of that experience doesn't mean anything to me, but in some ways, this person has used this blade or this material, you know, on things that I would, you know, I, I can relate to that. So this, some of this information is important to me, right? So that's the kind of thing that I try and point out, you know, 
when I'm talking about steel, because I'm not a professional, I'm not a metallurgist, I'm not a professional sharpener, I don't make or sell this, I don't do that, I'm right? just a regular person. But my point is, it, it is important to gain a, a little bit of understanding so that you know, like, is this going to work for me, right? Uh, and it's this, this is honestly how I came to the conclusion that I don't really like M390. Um, yeah, it'll hold an edge really long. What do I have out here in M390? Do I have anything? Yeah, this guy. So M390 is kind of the go-to steel when it comes to a premium knife. And in some geometries, it does work really well, right? A lot of times M390 is just slapped on a knife so that people in general are just like, yes, that, yes, I see you have chosen the premium material. I will take the knife, sir. Thank you. Ah, me as a connoisseur, yes, I know the premium letters and numbers. I see these, the M, the 3, the 9, and the 0. Yes, I can see that you are also a wise man of knife culture. Yes, here is my money. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, I, that's a, how I used to look at stuff, right? But uh, then I, you know, I used it and I had a wide range of experiences. I, I would say just general use D2 and M390, I've probably used those steels more than anything else. Truthfully, I prefer D2. <laughs> like actually using it, I actually prefer D2 over M390 because it's so much easier. It's it's so it's not like an necessarily the easiest steel to sharpen, but it's easier. Optimally heat treated D2 is easier to sharpen or friendlier than optimally heat treated M390. I definitely sharpened some M390 and felt like, eh, that was a bit quick. This is probably some of that softer stuff. And then I have also sharpened some M390 that I know was absolutely heat treated to around 62. And it was, it just sucked. Um, I, I just really did not enjoy it. And I thought for the amount of time, you know, that I'm going to have this sharp edge, um, it's just not worth having to sit down. Even if the time in between sharpening is elongated. I, I don't want to sit down, me, with my skill and the tools that I have, I don't want to sit down and invest an hour and a half or, you know, a lot. And again, some people are going to say, an hour and a half? If it's taking you that long, then you're not doing it right. Well, it does, though, right? In my experience, it does. Maybe that was a little, maybe it was more like an hour 15 or something. But I just don't want to do that. Um, honestly, about, you know, 45 minutes is what I'm used to. Uh, to get it the way that I want it. And if it's if that's all the time that it takes, then I enjoy it, you know? That's why I enjoy 154CM so much. Um, it doesn't seem to be a steel that is, you know, super difficult for companies to heat treat properly. Uh, Kaiser uses a lot, lots of companies use it. Um, uh, Protex CPM 154, I love it. I love it. Protex CBM 154. God, it's good. And it just pains me to see, this is kind of a rant. It pains me to hear how so many people are complaining, like, why does Protex still use 154 CM and CPM 154? Why don't they use 20 CM? I, God, I hope, I mean, you know, I, I feel like I will enjoy, I have not sharpened MagnaCut yet or any more than just stropping, general stropping I have, right? But I have not actually sat down and sharpened Magna Cut that's been hardened where it should be. I've got some Magna Cut here that's a little low at about 61. I think it's supposed to be about 63 or even 64. I have not sat down to sharpen it yet. Now, if my experience with Magna Cut at 63, 64 is 45 minutes of going from a dull edge to a sharp edge, and then it maintains that edge for a really long time. Magna Cut might be my new CPM 154. But for years, CPM 154, the ratio between the time spent using it, like how long it takes to go dull, to how long it takes to sharpen, I just love it. It's so friendly, and you can feel, you know, when you, the drag off the stone is just, you can feel what every last swipe is doing. I love that. M390, it just feels like it's fighting me every step of the way. Like, <laughs> guess where? Guess where it is? I don't know. Is there a bird check? Nope, not yet. You idiot. Like, <laughs> I just feel like it's mocking me the whole time. Different people are going to have different experiences, but this is why I'm just not super psyched about M390 and why I tend to, you know, in reviews, I'm like, and it's M390, so whoop-de-doo, right? 
It's a good composition. It can be excellent, I think, for some people, but I don't think it's like the perfect all around. If you have the opportunity to pick up a good sharpening system, again, I'm going to recommend the KME, uh, and I'll link it down below. They're made in the United States as well. If, you have, if, if you're new, and, and sharpening has always been an intimidating thing, um, pick up a sharpening system. Invest. I think the KME is like 250 bucks, And honestly, that's like the best 250 That is the, the best 250 bucks I have ever spent. You might need to buy some extra stuff. You might need to buy some additional stones. They're worth it. They're not that expensive, right? Um, that I, I'm so happy for it. So uh, because it it gave me the courage to actually put an expensive knife on the on the clamps, right? Put the stones to an expensive knife and find out is M three ninety everything that people say that it is. For me, I don't want to say universally no, but for me, no, it wasn't. It turns out 154 and CPM 154 and D2, right? And, you know, 3V is all right. It's definitely not my favorite. It's okay, right? S35VN, love it. Love S35VN. My experience with S45VN is also very good. Love that stuff. LMAX, very much love LMAX. 14C28N is like miracle steel. <laughs> I just, do you want to talk about a good sharpening experience? Oh, 14C28N it gives me chills. The, the the relationship between 14C28N and my KME, or rather the stones, like this guy right here. No, let's not even say that. I'd say the one that like the the one that seems to love 14, the best 14C28N is the 600. God, it's just like they're shaking hands. It's like a warm handshake after not two best friends not seeing each other for five years. And they just hug. That's what it feels like every time to sharpen 14C28N. It's wonderful, right? But sharpening your knives will help you understand what works for you in the environments that you are actually going to use your knives in. And I know I've got a lot of viewers who were like me in the beginning and you just wanted to collect. You wanted to carry the stuff maybe. And that was a big step, actually putting it in your pocket. But using it, that's a whole different arena because you don't really want to dull the edge because you don't really want to sharpen it. You don't want to take that beautiful, you know, factory edge away from it because it then, for, for whatever reason, you view it as imperfect or sullied or soiled, right? Eh. I still have knives that I won't put on the stones. I still have knives that I want to keep absolutely perfect. But I'm really happy that I, you know, that I took the plunge and sharpen some knives. Um, so sharpen your knives. You don't have to do them all, but play around with it. Buy a cheap knife, get a good sharpening system, and and uh, you know learn for yourself. Uh, find out how much you're willing, how much time you're willing to invest in sharpening um, versus how long it takes you know the edge to go dull. Uh, I think that's going to be pretty much it today. This was a fun topic to talk about. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.